All right, I uh, once again have started a project without uh, starting a video, so kind of typical speed for me, I guess. Kind of had the afterthought, but um, so this is my AV uh, system for my, uh, you know, run my. Uh, I have a CD player that I run through it and uh, could could run inputs from the TV and stuff like that too. Uh, set up to do like surround and stuff like that, but I'm really it's overkill for what I need. Uh, this is just the unit was free to me, so um, and it works, but it, it has a couple of glitches. Uh, and one of them, one of those, is losing this screen kind of intermittently. Kind of lose the readout on the screen and can't see what settings you're on and stuff like that. Uh, and there seems to be an audio an audio glitch. I'm kind of working on getting some new speakers too. Uh, those were also bunk, but I think that there's a um, there's an issue inside the unit itself here. It seems like it drops a channel occasionally, and then and then sometimes that channel that drops out. I'm not sure if it's the right or left on the A circuit there, but. Um, it drops out and then it gets kind of fuzzy sometimes and so there's I'm thinking there's uh, maybe some some capacitors that are losing tolerance or something in there um, I'm looking at this and I'm kind of I see there's a bodge kind of bodge wire here uh, that's probably factory though um, probably just a little mistake they they made and that's how they fixed it at the factory rather than reprint all new circuit boards or whatever so Anywho, um, so I, anyways, looking at this, I'm seeing a lot of, uh, you know, um, surface mount stuff here that was probably suspect in terms of uh, some sil uh, tin whiskers or something like that. So one of the first things we're going to try to do in regards to trying to solve the screen issue is just reflow those. Um, I've found so frequently to have trouble with surface mount chips like that in older equipment. Uh, let's see, this is an STR DE915, by the way. Um, so, I'm not sure the data manufacturer, but I'm thinking it's early 2000s or something like that. Somewhere in there. Maybe a little bit older, even. But, um, so, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that the trouble with the display is hopefully just going to be um, some pins that are not making good contact there. And if not, we'll dive into it a little bit further, I suppose. Um, but the main issue is going to be kind of getting into the sound end of her, and um, I'll truly be able to diagnose that a lot better once I know I have known good speakers, but I'm, I'm thinking the, it doesn't seem likely that the speakers were the issue. Uh, I don't think that would be intermittent. So, Anyways, uh, it's looking like probably this board down here is what I need to get at. Uh, uh, based on you know the speaker inputs and stuff on the back there and they seem to be attached to that board the ones I'm looking at anyways these top one is, is surround sound and that's still a, a daughter board off of this one this is kind of the main uh, um, speaker output board or whatever so uh, it looks kind of hairy to be honest with you there's a lot of stuff in the way and uh, whatever uh, but I guess I'll get it apart at some point um, I might tr just try the screen repair first and then see how see how that goes and uh, so yeah that's gonna be the uh, the project here and just as a note to self uh, where these ribbon cables go as it sits here this one on the left is by itself and it plugs in down there and these two are kind of bundled together the shorter one plugs in right there, and the longer one plugs in right there. They're pretty obvious. One of them has a is much longer and has a bend on it and stuff like that. But just to be safe. Okay, looking into this AV unit a little bit more. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm thinking these relays are going to be my suspects here, based on the symptoms I'm having. Um, with the speakers, I get one speaker channel cutting out, so it's probably one or the other of them that's bad, but I'm going to go ahead and replace both of them, I think. Uh, parts are fairly inexpensive, so if I'm if I'm wrong, I'm not going to feel too bad about it. Um, if I am wrong, though, like I said, I'm, I'm digging digging deeper into this thing, so I'm, I'm really hoping those are it. Um, and I'm feeling pretty confident about it. I'm feeling like that's an educated guess, at least. Um, and as for the screen here, 
Um, I'm thinking I'm just going to reflow the solder on these chips here, on the surface mount chips. Um, again, getting kind of an intermittent failure there, and uh, looking at those under the under my magnifier, I think I did see kind of a few tin whiskers and some other indications of maybe some not so chummy solder joints. So um, again, that's the that's that's kind of the easiest thing to try first before having to really tear it apart. So uh, I'm gonna try that and replace those two relays, and we'll see if I have success. All right, so neither of my initial fixes had any success. Um, I did see some kind of sketchy looking solder joints on the screen here, on the uh, microchips there, you know, on the really fine pitch solder joints, you know. But resoldering those did not seem to do anything, reflowing them. And also, um, my attempt to use the surround channel didn't work. I'm not quite sure how these speaker protection relays are. There's four of them. Not sure, quite sure how they're wired up yet. So, um, anyways, I had to get at this much more difficult board here, and it was uh, quite difficult to get out of there. <laughs> so. Well, my fix for the screen didn't work out. There were some kind of sketchy looking solder joints on the on the microprocessors there but that didn't seem to fix the intermittent issue and I actually didn't get any screen while I was testing it so I don't know if I made something worse or if it was just in one of its intermittent off cycles so um, and uh, I was unsuccessful in trying to use the surround circuit it seemed to be having the same issue so I'm thinking there's either flat capacitors on the main board here or it could still be a relay issue and I'm just not understanding how they're wired because these two, uh, these two boards are kind of in series with each other. This is the surround board, I think. It's kind of linked together with a fun looking kind of jumper thing here. All these little daughter boards had to come off too to take the back off and the back had a ton of screws in it. Really kind of a pain in the ass. But um, now that I'm in this far, I'm going to probably test everything that seems relevant and um, replace it. I ordered some, uh, uh, they're not new, but they're supposed to be good relays. Um, I got three new ones and I have four, so I don't know. I might try to track down another one or something like that. So, or just at least have a better understanding of them, maybe be able to test them individually. So, um, I'm going to see what I can do to this because, like I said, I still ha I have the intermittent uh, channel loss with either either the on the surround system or what they're calling the front speakers. So um, I want to get to the bottom of that so I can uh, make use of my AB system. What I'm seeing on the bottom side of this board in these kind of uh, heat fatigued areas is some definite signs of cracked solder joints. I could almost see one of them with the naked eye, so I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, unlikely, but uh, I don't have the technology to use a, ma use a magnifier shot or whatever, so you're just going to have to trust me. So I'm going to reflow some joints, and I'm still going to be replacing the speaker protection relays, but I uh, might as well start with the obvious here too. All right, I uh, th think we got some more progress here. Uh, there was a couple cracked solder joints here. This is the screen display board again. Um, let's see, I think it was these two look suspect. So those got reflowed. Uh, not getting any focus. Those two pins there look suspect. All the rest of these look good. Uh, I did find a small bridge from when I reflowed these before, so that might have been an issue as well. So I removed that solder bridge and reflowed those two. So if there are any issues related to that uh, on this board, then that should be resolved. 
And then I did reflow all these joints as well, all the ones that look suspect here. And really not getting any focus here. There we go. So definitely lead free solder, so it's kind of a, a bit of a pain. Nice there's a little little bit of mess around a couple of these, but nothing's bridged, so it look, may look a little not as clean as I like, but yeah, it's a pain to pain to reflow. I use lead based solder to reflow, of course, but you kinda have to wick the old solder out of there first and some of it gets splashed around and again because it's higher melting temperature it's it gets a little messy but anyways so um yeah in these two suspect areas between those two there's probably at least 10 obviously cracked joints so i just reflowed everything that was in the questionable region there and like i said i'm gonna wait for these two new relays here those blue guys there's six pins each um so i'm gonna replace those just while i'm down there all the capacitors checked out there's not that many on here, um, but especially these big uh, 10,000 microfarad, those checked out. So, anywho, I'm hoping after I replace those relays, they'll have a rock and AV system again. That's the plan. Okay, so I got the speaker protection relays done here on this bottom board. It's these six pins right there, four and then two. And then one and two. The parts that are in there, the part number is that, if you can see it. Okay, so the uh, ones I got were of have an SH designation, and apparently that just has to do with the tightness of the case seal of the relay. Uh, one of them is, is uh, wash tight, you know, it can be uh, put through a parts washer or whatever to take the flux off. And these are um, the SH ones are just uh, flex tight, so, uh, so that is the only difference. So I, I pop, pop those in there. I got three total. That's just what the lot was. They're used, but in good condition. Um, so I don't have enough to put, replace the top, the surround speakers. So I don't have enough to replace the surround circuit as well, obviously. I'm just going to let those go for now. I don't necessarily know there's any issue with them either. Um, I have one extra, so I suppose if I did start to have trouble with them, if I had a surround system set up, it would be the only way I'd know about it. So um, at that point, I could uh, get another relay, I guess. So. Uh, I'm going to try to put all this back together without breaking anything. Uh, I don't think I showed you these before, uh, but these pins, this, this uh, little jumper board, one on each side, very, uh, very evil. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what was holding the board in place after I unscrewed everything, and it was, uh, it was those, so it's kind of, they're kind of quite sneaky, so Fortunately, I didn't break anything, and I think it should all go back together and work, but I was wondering what these weird-looking sockets were before, because those were exposed. But So, uh, all these daughter boards all stack on there, and they have their own, their own jumpers, and it's uh, pretty complex. That's why I wasn't looking forward to doing it, so. um, but I'm glad it's done now, and I'm looking forward to it being back together and hopefully cranking some tunes here in a minute. So I just learned an interesting lesson for myself here, um, and that is to do your do your homework or uh, check out other opportunities if something looks ridiculously uh, difficult to do. As you can see, I have access to everything I would have needed access to by taking this panel off the bottom. I was trying to reconnect these evil little jumpers here that are uh, not so evil when you access you can access them from this side. So both in taking them off and putting them on, I had a lot more difficulty than I should have. Or, well, now putting them back on was the way it was supposed to be because I was trying to, I was thinking I could reach through these heat fins and then I realized, wait, this panel comes off. So <clears throat> there's a lesson learned kind of the hard way. I did probably a lot of extra work I didn't have to, taking all this stuff off and, you know, whatever other, whatever other parts, you know. So... Lesson learned.